Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and what you're seeing right here is the world's first video of what's known as a time crystal. Now it's a complex topic, but we're going to dissect exactly what it means, and this video will hopefully help you understand the significance of this discovery and this particular study that's found in the description below. First of all, what exactly is a time crystal? Well, it's a crystal in time, but okay, that definitely doesn't explain anything. Let's start with crystals. You might already know what crystals are, but just in case you didn't, it's essentially different types of materials that form very specific geometric shapes based on the underlying structure. Such as this crystal right here, known as galena, or the more famous example right here, known as quartz. And the formation of these geometric structures is essentially related to the underlying atomic structure of the material in question as it solidifies and forms this solid structure. And so, for example, let's just say we wanted to take a look at the molecules of the Galena crystals. The structure here would look something like this. And as the structure grows and becomes larger and larger, the octahedral geometry starts forming these relatively large cube-like formations and sometimes octahedrons, formed because all of the molecules on the inside have exactly the same structure as well. Quartz, on the other hand, has a different molecular structure, and thus results in a more hexagonal shape. And that's essentially how all of these crystals grow in a nutshell. As something solidifies and as the molecular structure stays constant, they grow into these large shapes, turning into large geometric objects, like this really cool halite crystal that's around 16 centimeters in diameter. And on the inside, it kind of looks like this. And if you want to check out more of these images and also find out more about the crystals, you can find the link in the description. And so a lot of things out there become crystals. Things like water becomes ice crystal. We also have sand that becomes a crystal. Even your DNA and even sugar and salt become crystals. And we of course also have something known as liquid crystals that are often used in LCDs. So today crystals are used in a lot of different ways and we kind of depend on them both technologically and in terms of just regular life. Although interestingly, by definition, to create a crystal, the symmetry has to end at some point. So without ending the symmetry, you don't really have the crystal. But anyway, semantics aside, let's get to the topic at hand. Roughly around 9 years ago, back in uh, 2012, the very famous physicist, who you might have already heard about from a previous video, Frank Wilczek, who also won a Nobel Prize in Physics, made a theoretical proposition that, hypothetically speaking, we should also be able to have what's known as a time crystal. So a material that's not just symmetric in space, but is also symmetric in time, both in space and in time. It's a space-time crystal. And his proposition made a lot of sense, but nobody really knew how to approach it. Although within just a few years, in 2016, the first time crystal was discovered, although it involved some really crazy particles and a lot of spinning ions, and it wasn't really what you would call a um, symmetrical material in space. It was a time crystal though. But this time around, the actual creation was a lot different and way, way more impressive. As a matter of fact, let's actually just watch this video one more time. Because what you're looking at here is literally the first ever video of an actual space-time crystal. It's a material that's both symmetric in space and in time. And you can kind of see it coming back in time to the exactly the same structure after a certain period. And that's something that we've actually never seen before, and something that was never created anywhere in the world. Which means that it took about 9 years to go from a physical hypothesis to literally creating this in a lab. And that's quite impressive. And to create this, the scientists had to use an extremely tiny micrometer-sized perma alloy, which is basically a mixture of nickel and iron, and then blast this with a tremendous amount of microwave radiation. And this resulted in the creation of what they refer to as magnons. Magnons are basically kind of like pseudoparticles or quasi-particles that often arise when something interacts with something else. A more real-life example here would be like something like this. It's a flock of birds that forms a shape. But this is a quasi-shape or a quasi-particle in this case. It's formed by individual birds, but the actual shape itself doesn't really exist. And this is an example of what magnon would be in physics. And what we're actually observing here is a kind of a recurring periodic magnetic structure inside the crystal that then remagnetizes once in a while. And that's because iron-nickel material is quite magnetic, but they were changing the amount of magnetism by blasting this with microwave radiation. 
And so in this case, what we're looking at is essentially a recurring structure. It's a structure that sort of moves around a lot and then comes back to the original position after a specific time, thus creating the space-time crystal. But just like with a lot of similar ideas, kind of like Einstein back in the 1920s, Wilczek also predicted this to be very hypothetical and probably not really real. He didn't think it existed in nature or could be created. Einstein, likewise, also did not believe black holes were real. But now we know that both seem to exist and both are possible. And that's actually the mind-blowing part. It's the idea that someone had in their mind that was later created in a lab. And what makes this even more groundbreaking is the fact that this is at room temperature. These are not exotic components, these are not elements that are like near absolute zero. This is just regular metal stuff at regular room temperature. Which is actually really exciting, because one day we'll definitely find a way to use this somewhere in the lab in some way or another. And one of the implications from the study already is that we could potentially use this in quantum computing. Because time crystals obviously allow us to predict what's going to happen in a specific period of time, we can use them to predict quantum effects. And a lot of quantum interaction by using qubits, for example, is actually easily achieved through the use of these magnons. Obviously, this is not a concept I'm going to be able to explain in this video, but you can also maybe check out some of the previous quantum computing videos I made that do actually go into this in some more detail. There should be some videos popping up above me. And because by nature these quasi-particles can interact with other particles and vice versa, it means that we can actually create systems using time crystals where things are controlled and where things are predicted very easily in both space and in time. Obviously, we already know how to use normal crystals, the space crystals. For example, your phone right now might be based on LCD, liquid crystal technology. But this right here creates a completely new field of study and also a potentially a completely new field of various products we might have in, I guess, three or four decades from now. Something that nobody right now can even imagine. And because this pattern was clearly appearing and disappearing on its own, without any changes in the microwave radiation, it only suggested that all of this was most likely quantum in nature. It probably related to the quantum spin or some other quantum element present inside of the molecules of this material. Now, how exactly this works is not entirely clear yet, but the scientists think that because of the microwave radiation bombarding this piece of metal, some sort of an oscillating magnetic field was produced inside the material, which then interacted with the quantum effects from the electrons inside iron and nickel, and thus produced this very unusual quasi-particle wave that was crystallized in both time and in space. And so here I guess it's important to kind of note that it's not really physical time crystal. It's not really made out of real molecules. Here it's made out of a quasi-particle and in this case of something related to quantum effects inside the atoms. And the other thing to note here is of course the camera that had to be used for this experiment. Apparently it's an extremely complex x-ray camera that was made specifically for the experiment. As you can see here it actually allows us to see every single wave front even though these are extremely tiny in size, only nanometers in size, and it shows us absolutely everything with relatively high resolution, about 20 times better than any light microscope can produce. And all of this was also filmed at around 40 billion frame rates per second, roughly around a billion times more than the video you're watching right now. So it's definitely a really cool discovery and a super cool experiment. But what exactly we're going to be using these crystals for, only time will tell. Unlike a typical crystal like this quartz crystal here, we still don't really have any physical use for them, but the potential for radio communication and for maybe even radar, or some sort of imaging technology, is definitely already there. We can also possibly use these time crystals as a way to keep track of memory in quantum computers, essentially quantum memory. And on the other hand, they can also be used to have particles interact across very, very large distances. So definitely a lot of potential applications. But once we actually understand what to do with them, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, well, check out the paper in the description below, and also the video I used as well because it's actually kind of cool, and subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, or by joining the YouTube membership that you can find in the description as well. Either way, come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.